Minister of Youth and Sports Sunday Diary questioned the competence of Super Eagles coach Raw following two draws against Sierra Leone. Welcome back to the sports segment of the weekend show. My name is Amanda Soki. And I'm Ayo Adams. Good morning, beautiful people. The Five Stars Premier League came to an end on Saturday with Suicide Squad edging Olympic Hybrid 3 0 in a very, very, very blockbuster event. It took place in the tough arena and Olympic Hybrid looked to want to come into the game of Suicide Squad where the best of the best. They are now the champions of the grassroots football league called Five Stars Premier League in Abuja. Also, UEFA Nations League has come to its final part. We have final four teams. We have Italy, we have Spain, we have France, and we have Belgium, who are the leaders of their group. Well, today we have a guest in the studio. He's a Manchester United fan, <laughs> and he's here to kick it off with us. More analysis. Welcome, Yayat, <laughs> on the studio. Thank you very Welcome much. Welcome to the sports segment. Thank you very much. Welcome, Glad to be yeah, here. Yeah. So, Amanda, <laughs> yeah, go right so to moving it. On, <laughs> moving on to the Premier League news. Well, EFL clubs have voted to allow teams to have five substitutions per match starting on Friday, which started yesterday. But Premier League teams continue to refuse to allow five substitutions. Well, I guess let me start with you. What do you think about five substitutions? Why EPL teams are refusing to come on board with five substitutions are you for it or are you against it what do you I think i am <laughs> definitely for it <laughs> because you can see the way the players are getting injured the way the players are falling like flags for example <laughs> liverpool players <laughs> it's been such a really tough time for the players because so i think they should be protected the epl should really look into it and get the five substitution rule into the game because this con congestion of the fixtures has been really really tough for the players and those could bring about muscle injuries and they suffer it a lot so i think they should do it well i think i think it's a good idea because now it's i think the only reason why it hasn't really gone into debate is because it's only the big coaches are exactly. asking for it yeah. exactly. you know, the club yeah. and pep exactly. and then you see frank lampard also asking for it but now if you see someone mm -hmm. like um mm -hmm. jao paul that the, the lots of them when they come out and say okay we need this five subs too because the five subs is not just for the big teams. big teams and for yeah, me yeah. frankly i think it will help the smaller teams better even. you think so even i think <laughs> no, no, okay let's take a look at if you have liverpool <laughs> coming in with the roster or man city or che no, I mean chelsea mm -hmm. coming with yeah. the roster, you also have the same amount of players coming in difference in level and class fine but yes energy and this season has shown that the better team on that day will always win the game so it's not even about <laughs> who is better it's not about the big you team know. anymore if you're good on that day you will win no so i think for me i just believe that um lower teams kind of see it as an advantage for them you know don't forget big teams we, ha we have more games to play most yeah. of them lower teams tend to get knocked out of cup yeah, cups cup they don't really their early. players don't really get called for international, international games yes. so if you even look at injuries right now you, know, you don't see the smaller <laughs> you don't see smaller teams you don't injured. see leads <laughs> getting or you know no disrespect to them but you know it's the liverpool's the top teams you know players they have to play champions league you play fa cup you play efl you still go and play for your country really so when they say they international break they're not going to rest <laughs> they're going to play they're football. going to exactly and so if you look at the injury rates it's always from the international yes break. so you know little um smaller teams just see it as you know what it's not going it's to not do going us to anything work. allowing bigger teams play five subs is just going to allow them you know spread and you know allow their all their players you okay, know I get think, the rest i think so. at the end of the day they will find they will eventually <laughs> I hope realize so. it mm -hmm. so yeah. mm -hmm. still on the premier league pep guardiola just signed a two a two-year deal and then extending his stay at manchester city well sorry for the barcelona fans there is no <laughs> pep union there might be a reunion between pep and Lionel messi but for <laughs> pep guardiola there is no reunion because 2023 Pep is still at Manchester City. Yeah, yeah, what do you think of this? Mm -hmm. Now, Pep hasn't won the Champions League. I remember we were having a discussion uh, last week, and yeah. it was, how did you not win the Champions League with that Bayern team? Now, Man City's team starts started, nothing. Fine, domination of the league. So, do you think, now they've backed him up. Yeah. After winning the deal, they still backed him up, but he needs money to refresh the squad. They said, refresh the squad. Yeah. <laughs> so, their game for Pep, is it a good call? Should Pep still stay, or should they have let him just go? Honestly speaking, I think it's a good idea because at the end of the day, Pep is still one of the best managers around. His well pedigree speaks for itself. So, and the Man City team, they've got a lot of quality players. Understandably, they haven't done quite well in Europe in the past years, 
only for reasons known to Pep. <laughs> 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 but I think it's a good idea because, come on, he's been in England for how many years? Four years now, and he has won the league in two years. Mm -hmm. And out of those two record years, record-breaking record starts. So, start. so <laughs> it's been, it's yeah. been actually very, yeah, very good. I actually, him. I agree with you that Pep, you know, staying on with Man City is a good choice. You know, but if you think about it, there really isn't much options out there right now. Yes. If Pep leaves, who are they going to bring? Who are they going it's to hire? Is, so you know, <laughs> <laughs> no yes, way they'll go to Pochettino after uh, <laughs> Pep Guardiola. So it's a good move for Manchester City, and of course, I know you know maybe with some luck, you know. Two years, three years, Man City might win okay. the Champions League. Okay. Who knows? No shit to buy. <laughs> <laughs> no shade. No. Right, let's, let's see. <laughs> but yeah, moving on, you know, once again during international break, um, once um, France won Portugal, you know, Paul Pogba, Man our Manchester United midfielder, he made a comment, you know, post match stating that stating that it's a breath of fresh air when you come here we have a truly fantastic squad when when we come here we are all happy this is speaking in reference to playing with the french team and you know of course last the last time we went on international break he made another controversial okay. statement so we're back at this again and you know keep people keep wondering the same thing why does paul pogba perform so well when he's playing for france in comparison to when he's playing for manchester united so i'll start with you since you're a manchester fan. <laughs> what do, you, do you see a different yeah, yeah, a, a different <laughs> do you see a different Pog pogba playing for um france you know very disciplined very very disciplined compared yeah. to wait, what what do you think is the reason for that behavior Fra playing for country versus playing for your club what is it what can you pinpoint it to well i would say France is his home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Manchester United is his club where he plays his club football. But the teammates, the team setup, the tactics, they all play roles in how a player would, you know, show his ability. But at United, I think there is just this missing thing. I do not know what it is because sometimes you could see that Ole knows what he's doing and some other days you're like, you do not know what this man is doing. In France, it isn't like that. He's got better players around him. There is a standard system for him to play in. He doesn't have to go there. This today he's playing as a six, tomorrow mm -hmm. he's playing as an eight. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, do like, doesn't go like that for him in the France team. But in Manchester United, it isn't quite stable. At, I remember at some point uh, in um, the 2017-2018 season, sorry, 2018-2019 season, when Ole came into when, yes. when Ole came to United, Pogba, Pogba was practically the best player in the league. Yes. Mm -hmm. In in like in the stretch in the, in that stretch of of, of, yeah. of like mm -hmm. eleven games or so. He was yeah. scoring. He was scoring, yeah. assisting, yeah. playing yeah. so well. Mm -hmm. Even when he stopped scoring, he was still playing well. Yes. Before fatigue came in and the yeah. team mm -hmm. dropped down and all of that. Beginning of last season too. He started well before the injury problems. So do you problems. think it's, it's, it might be, yes, you know, maybe with Ayo. For a top player like Pogba, I know we've even talked about this. This is actually what makes people, players, stand out. Consistency versus yeah. inconsistency. Me, One I, minute, I he's great. Yeah. <laughs> so what is, for, me, what, for any player <laughs> playing for country and club, as in what can you put it down to? For me, to? I won't <laughs> jump on the Pogba's bandwagon anymore. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, he's been given a lot of room to make and break. I remember when Paul Scholes, I like think first t set of interviews, yeah. like we bought you as Paul Pogba, the one we saw at Juventus, yes. not mm -hmm. to come and show both <laughs> in Manchester United. It's been four years, am I correct? Yeah. And he's yeah. had a couple of seasons. After that 11 stretch of games, I don't think we can pinpoint when Pogba had five to six, seven. The stretch. first season he was he was spectacular. It was sensational. Mm -hmm. no was sensational. But for the now, first season. yes, there's a, there's a squad that works around him in France. In France, they work tirelessly. Tirelessly. You yeah. have yeah. Yeah. You have Nzonzi. You, you have, have Kante. Just say he doesn't have need to do anything. Just gets the <laughs> ball and play. In Manchester United, it requires more as a yes. manager, and, and he needs to do that by yeah. himself. Yeah. Exactly. And what you mentioned, France, they have Kante. Or think about it, Kante. Is a great defensive it's midfielder. It's unreal. <laughs> it does, he, you don't need to do too much. And Pogba for Manchester United, I would think he would be better because he in France they don't really need him to create or attack because they have Mbappe, they have Griezmann, they have all those people to do that. But for my United, attack. Well, I, give, I feel he even has more freedom, which should even make him better. And I, you know, just um, to point out, I remember when Mourinho left Manchester United. You know, he 
was um, during the World Cup, he made a statement. And, you know, I know Ray Moreno was a Manchester United coach. I was against him and I felt he was hating on Pogba. But he has just come that most of the things he said about Manchester United, about our players, has yeah. been actually correct. Let me true. say what he said yeah. about He said um, in 2018, after France won the World Cup, he said, I think the World Cup is the perfect habitat for a player like Pogba um, to give their best. He said, this, he said, why? Because it's a cl it is closed for a month where he can only think about football, where he's with his team on the training camp, completely isolated from the external world, where the, where the focus is just on football, where the dimensions of game can only motivate. So I think he's trying to say that Pogba is easily distracted. distracted. Yeah. And I think I agree, discipline. yes. Let me, just, let, 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 yeah. let me just get the final mm. word in here. Like you said, France, mm. Mbappe, uh, Griezmann, Giroud, they will create anything out of nothing. Yeah. Manchester United is not that way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for Pogba, it needs to work better. Yeah. So, <laughs> so offline, is like we've been doing this a lot. <laughs> updates, updates on, on, on COVID. We have another update on COVID this morning. And Mohamed Eleni, Mo Salah, Luis Suarez, Torreira, they are all out because of COVID and lots and lots of more players. So Barcelona fans will be thrilled to have Suarez <laughs> not available for yeah, this fixture because it's been, it's been spectacular since leaving Barcelona. Proving them wrong that you sh it's, she shot me out. <laughs> I, I, still, I still have it. And you know, Salah is in good form. Eleni has picked up Torreira too. So they are going to be really, really missing links in their teams. Yeah. But then, like we said, we've been saying constantly, they need to keep... I mean, Salah's own happened during his brother's yeah. wedding. He was pictured <laughs> dance, dancing around. But then... Uh, that's for uh, Pep to settle. Okay. So yes, and now we move to the Premier League fixtures of the weekend. Big, big fixtures. Big, okay, big ones. Okay, so let's, let's, let's make our predictions. So today, yeah, I guess, today we have Chelsea versus Newcastle. Newcastle. I think it's going First to be match mm. of the day. Um, easy win for Chelsea. Yeah. Easy win for Same Chelsea. Here, Go for team, Werner. Right Same, Chelsea. yes. Easy win for Chelsea. Also, the exciting one, Mourinho versus Pep. We have yeah. Spurs versus Manchester City, 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. today. Um, let's start with Ayo. Who are you going for? Oh, Do we need to ask? It's, no, it's, it's Pep. It's, it's <laughs> I, I feel like it's going to be a really tough game because they're going to attack. They're really going to come at us. And there is mm. Bale. There is Son. These people are on real form. I mean, not to take anything away from the king of the, mm -hmm. the king of the hearts, mm -hmm. Harry Kane. So Kane. he's there. But then you know, Pep always comes up with something. He will always come up with something. Mm -hmm. But okay. if he if he snoozes today, he will lose. <laughs> it's just that simple. <laughs> I will keep saying Definitely. it. Definitely. I will back my team. I will back anything okay. I support. But if you snooze on that day, you will lose. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so who, who do you think is the, who you going to? I go? am going for Mourinho's Tottenham. And yeah. funny enough, I'm actually going for um, Tottenham. You know, although City is actually in great form, yeah. you know, having lost what, in nine matches. But Tottenham, right now, they are like the top scoring yes, team. Yeah. And, Indeed. you know, if one, you know, one thing with Mourinho, well, though they are right now exciting, I, I, I think the best way to beat Pep is to counter-attack him. Yeah, and I think Mourinho will just set press. up to Kane and I, Son that are going to, to just me, walk their have, um, He has the <laughs> best magic. poison to kill Pep. Mm. Son, thank you. Bill. Bill. They will run the defense yeah. ragged today. And Kane too. So, and you know Walker is always impossible. He might commit Son. It's very easy for him to yeah, do that. He's very clumsy. So, so yes, we have that. Way. And also we have United facing West Brom. I'll ask for your picks, but I already know your picks. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, you know what? When it comes to Manchester United against you know West Brom, they've been in very very poor form they actually but have they score. They score yeah. goals. They, they don't they don't even really score goals actually. <laughs> they are not that great but I will say that with Manchester United, this is meant to be an easy win. But if you look at our home whole, record. this whole <laughs> home record and playing against small teams, we are totally a, a disaster. You know, if West Brom comes to Man United, sit back, low block, we're going to just... I'll say Manchester United. Manchester United. Hmm? If you have a good setup you. against Manchester United, you will be likely to have hmm? a tussle. Yeah. But then yeah. if you're a free flow playing team, look at Everton. You come out to play Ole, even we'll we'll destroy you. <laughs> 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 yes. But then if you set up at the back, nothing exactly. happens. <laughs> and yeah. also we still have late at night today, Atletico Madrid versus Barcelona, the Wanda Metropolitano, 9 p.m. Yeah, well, Messi is back for Barcelona, but not so much for Luis Suarez. <laughs> so who do you guys pick? Um, it's very hard because both teams are actually in great form. But but yeah. I'll just say maybe. Atletico has not lost a game this yes, season. Yes, they haven't <laughs> lost a game. They actually, you know, so I'll, I don't. I think I'll go for Atletico Madrid because they're home. Oh, home advantage. Home advantage. Sorry, always against. Okay, okay. 
All right, mm. then, and on then we have on the Sunday, the, the blockbuster clash on Sunday, Leicester versus. Before we go there, we have Leeds versus Arsenal. Good attacking game. Mm. So, yeah. I think I'll pick Leeds. Uh, mm. You? I think it's just going to be a high scoring draw. I would want to go for Arsenal because mm. I think that they, they've probably reshaped, but. I won't go for Leeds. They are porous at the defense. You read, yeah, but they are porous yeah. at the defense. It's one thing is yeah. for Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Put the goals at the back of the net today. If you can put the goals at the back of the net, you might high scoring, mm -hmm. high scoring for me too, <laughs> but yeah. not a draw. Mm -hmm. And then we have Napoli versus AC Milan. Mm. That's it. Simeone is not is not in for Napoli. Yeah. <laughs> and then Zlatan after his uh, <laughs> Christmas antics, <laughs> will he should be hyped up. <laughs> yeah, he'll be hyped up to come and play. Yeah. That's yeah. really a good motivation. Yeah. PS5 for your for your whole teammate. And a weekend clash against Napoli. I'll pick AC Milan. They've been <laughs> also been, they've been awesome. in good form. They've been, they've been so in good form, no doubt about I'll that. And it's very obvious the way Stefano Pioli has mm -hmm. set that team up. up they play, play very yeah. good They're football these days. So Unlike the last good. two seasons, yeah. they're really, really mm -hmm. poor. Yeah. Yeah. And good. finally, <laughs> on Sunday, Leicester versus Liverpool, the team who has been run ragged by injuries <laughs> all through the season. And I'm sure that Pep don't even know what to say when he got the news of Salah having COVID, you're like, oh, <laughs> Lord. You know, for that but one, I wanted to pick Leicester, but just for the sake of records, um, I know Leicester actually haven't won Liverpool in the six, six matches. Yeah, yes. the six matches. So I was like, you know what? Liverpool, one thing about he just finds a way. It's as if the players don't make the team. It's his yes. whole system, system that yeah. makes the, the team. team. And that is so literally what I want from Ole to make the system work. So I'll pick Liverpool Ole? to win. What about you, Yaya? I'm also picking Liverpool to win just because of one person, Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane, Sadio Mane yeah. is, a, is a really great game changer and he would, he would really, really do something there. But for me, I, I still, I'm still talking about the defence and being good. Leicester always shows up on every time they, every time yeah, they play Liverpool. They but do. Like you said, they always they lose. lose. So let's see if they can do something different today. I'm sure. going to go with Leicester since we're against each other today. <laughs> so it's Leicester for me. It's Leicester for me. I know that Honda and Vardy will run them like Ashley Barnes. I mean... So yes, yes. <laughs> we'll see what how, how, how that unfolds. All and Amanda, right. NBA. So moving on to NBA. Well, on Wednesday, you know, what has been trending is, you know, nine, there are eight Nigerians, you know, of course, sometimes you say with Nigerian heritage, that, you know, were drafted into the NBA, which is great news. We have Isaac Okoro, who was the fifth overall um, pick, and he went to the Cleveland Cavaliers. We have Onyeka Okongu, who was sixth. He also went to... Atlanta Hawks, there's Precious Achiwa, who was the 20th pick, and went to Miami Heat. If you know, Miami Heat actually has four other Nigerian players. Yeah, yeah, we have the famous Bama Debayo, Andre Igodalo, Chikeze Opala, and also Gabe Vincent. So he's going, I'm sure, in fact, Miami Heat will soon turn to Nigerians will soon all convert to being a Miami Heat fan. So also we have Ezekiel Naji, who was 22nd pick for the Denver Nuggets. Udoka Azubike, who was also 27th pick for, um, and went to Utah Jazz. He was actually, um, he actually has an interesting story. He was born here in Nigeria and he got picked by, um, he was discovered by an academy here and drew the attention of the Basketball Without Borders and oh, wow. they took him overseas <laughs> <laughs> to play That's basketball. So, nice and now he's, Picked and has a team so great. They say he's actually seven feet eleven. Wow. So I guess his height attracted wow, them. A lot of people. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so wow. great job, Udoka. And we also have Desmond Bain. He was the thirtieth pick to the Boston Celtics. Daniel Oturu, who was thirty third um, pick to the Minnesota Timberwolves, but apparently he's set to um, move to LA Clippers. You know they do this exchange. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <Same> <laughs> thing, yeah. And also um, Daniel Oturu. I've Apparently, his father actually played, um, is a former table tennis player for Nigeria. So I wow. guess the athletic Nigerians are really doing well outside the country. They <laughs> yes, are racking Nigeria, up, they are racking up this, this Exactly. And lastly, we have Jordan Wara, who should, I believe, Nigerians should know because he played for the senior men's basketball team, also known as the Tigers. Um, he was the 45th um, pick and went to the Milwaukee um, box. He played in the 2019 senior men's basketball team. And also his father is the coach of the, um, the father was the Nigeria's head coach at the World Cup, but currently he's the country's um, assistant coach. So, and um, 
He actually, Jordan is also Nigeria's highest scorer in a single match after he registered 36 points in 2019 World Cup qualifiers. So congratulations to all of them. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's a lovely start. I mean, as in, this is lovely. so great this for so Nigerian, great for Nigerian basketball. As let's, in. Well, let's see if they can come back home to play for the, for yeah, the, for the I, teams. I know that's like a lot of yes, spots on Twitter um, yesterday. I know um, what's the fifth overall pick, Isaac uh, Okoro. Once he was picked, he made a statement saying um, that it feels great to be the first Nigerian getting picked. So him acknowledging and that. saying that he's even though he wasn't born, his mom always told him to have that Nigerian pride. So I'm praying. Not just the biggest cup, America will trust them. We'll see how they, we'll see how they perform next yeah. season. And mm -hmm. finally, the final news mm -hmm. for today mm -hmm. is Formula One. Lewis Hamilton has clinched the world record the seventh time, the Constructors' Championship for the seventh time on Sunday, tying mm -hmm. the all-time record of legend Michael Schumacher in the F1. And that's all we have for you. This, well, first of all, let's, mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. thank our, our guest <laughs> yes. today. Yeah, thank, thank you for coming you. on the show. Yeah, my pleasure. We wish to have you more and more here. My and for, uh, for the video of the week, rather than the goal of the week, we have the mm -hmm. celebratory video of Suicide Squad, who are the five stars Premier League champions of the 2020 season. Let's have it. Thank you. Stay tuned to the weekend show. Sure There's more. And I'm, <laughs> sorry, my name is Ayo Adams. And I am Amanda Soki. <laughs> Thank I'll see you, you next week. Stay tuned. <laughs>